Welcome to worship at Lindale Lutheran Church on the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Cheryl, and as always, I'm glad to be here with all of you. I hope you were able to join us either in person or via Facebook Live this past Sunday for our Rally Sunday Drive-In Worship, when we also celebrated First Holy Communion. It was a beautiful day filled with worship and fellowship, even as we all remain safely distanced. Always we gather as God's people, and always in the words of Carolyn Gillette, in our houses and apartments, in the rooms where people stay, in the midst of this pandemic, God, we worship, sing, and pray. We begin with our gathering hymn. Gracious God, we will not gather side by side this Pentecost. How we long to be together, crowded close beneath the cross. Still our hearts join with others, trusting in your love and grace. Here we are, your sons and daughters, praising you in every place. In our houses and apartments, in the rooms where people stay, in the midst of this pandemic, God, we worship, sing, and pray. People from each land and nation, from each language that we use, grieve the need for separation, yet united share good news. As we're distant from each other in the midst of so much fear, may your churches all remember by your spirit you are here long ago the wind came blowing flames of love and boldness spread soon the church went out proclaiming christ is risen from the dead peter preached what joel had promised in the most uncertain times you give dreams and visions to us you send great and wondrous signs by your spirit give us courage may your church unite to be bearers of your good news message to your world community. When I think of God's presence in the world, I am grateful. Grateful for the presence of hope. Grateful for the gift of life. And when I think of God's presence in my life, I am humbled humbled by the gift of grace, humbled by the invitation to begin again. And when I think of God's presence in this community, I am glad, glad to be surrounded by holy people worshiping our holy God. Thank you all and thank you God. We gather as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's mercy is deeper than the depths of the sea, and God's grace is wider than the whole of the earth. Trusting in that mercy and grace, let us make our confession before God and each other. Great and gracious God, for apathy, for meanness, for boredom, for pride, for judgment, for dismissal, for all those ways we hurt you by hurting each other and ourselves, forgive us. Turn us around to you. Heal us and make us whole, we pray. Amen. 
hear this good news and see the grace of God. It is my joy to tell you that in Christ your sins are forgiven. You are free, live in the light of God, share God's mercy and love. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual grace to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and teach us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Listen now as Paul speaks of grace in his letters to the Corinthians and the Ephesians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 20th chapter. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go to the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, Those last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we continue our conversation and contemplation of grace. God's Amazing Grace, Lindale's theme for this new program year, old words of great comfort in this new time of uncertainty. We hear Paul remind us that Jesus said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient, sufficient. Synonyms for sufficient include adequate, appropriate, ample, enough. Grace is enough. Grace is all we need. Last Sunday, I shouted, Ollie, Ollie, income free. And we talked about how grace is about God calling us home, calling us home free again and again. How God always says, come, come, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. A really large wrap package reminded our kids and us that grace is a gift, free and unearned. Grace is the free, unearned, and undeserved love and forgiveness of God. Unlike all the things we must earn in this life, good grades, our salaries and wages, the approval of others, God's grace is free. Grace is a gift. We talked about grace being amazing, being one of the most beautiful aspects of our Christian faith. 
we were reminded that God's grace is abundant and never runs out, that God's grace extends to all humankind. It is always greater than the depth of our sin because grace has its source in the goodness of God and God's goodness is immeasurable and unending. So even if it doesn't feel like it, especially in these times of COVID and wildfires and hurricanes and division, as our penance said this past Sunday, grace wins. We have received grace upon grace. Knowing grace would be my sermon topic for at least a couple of weeks, I haven't been paying much attention to the assigned lectionary readings for September. As I considered early this week how I might continuing, continue our wonderings about grace, I took a look at the gospel assigned for today. Guess what? It speaks to grace. Maybe, just maybe, God's Holy Spirit is at work. Imagine that. Like many of the parables, all gifts to us, sometimes easily opened and other times not so much, this parable of the workers in the vineyard has been understood in many and various ways. It is a difficult story. This parable is a bit of good news, bad news. And I share what David Lowe wrote about this parable a few years ago. Before the good news is good news, it is bad news. It is not what we expect. We expect fair and we get generous. We expect justice and we get mercy. We expect getting what you deserve and we get grace. Easy to read this story and say, oh, the vineyard owner, AKA God, is so nice. But what if we stop and truly identify with the people who've been working all day? We quickly understand how very unfair the whole thing is. Who wouldn't resent working all day and receive, receiving exactly the same amount of money as a person who worked one hour? And that's the problem with grace. It's not fair. And that's why we don't always like it. We set up so much of our lives in the expectation that the world is, or at least should be, fair. What about karma? What about an eye for an eye, some atonement, some justice? What about, for every action, an equal and opposite reaction? Grace messes with all that and introduces an uncertainty that's hard to live with. I mean, if people coming right at the end of the day get the same amount as everyone else, then what can we count on, says Dr. Lose. We like order, stability, certainly, certainty. That way we can at least feel as though we are in control. We know the rules, we play by the rules, we get ahead. And then someone messes with the rules. We all day hard workers don't like that. But now, imagine being among those not called for work, not picked for the first string. We wait all day. Maybe we don't look like we'd be good workers. Maybe we have a disability. Maybe it's just the way it played out. Lots of people play by the rules and don't get ahead. And plenty of others ignore every rule and seem to do more than fine. The world isn't fair. Does that mean we don't care about justice? Of course not. But does it mean that even justice has its limits? And when justice meets its limit, then all we can turn to is grace. When you are the one at the bottom, when you are the one who has messed up and hurt yourself or someone else, then suddenly grace matters. Grace is for all the people who aren't okay or who don't have it all together. It still messes with our sense of order. Grace makes no sense. Maybe that's why it's amazing. It may not be pretty, but again, I agree with David. It is rather beautiful. Grace is beautiful. And I was reminded by Christian that this is exactly what the musical group U2 says with their song titled Grace. As one blogger shares, the song depicts Grace as a beautiful woman who creates music wherever she goes a woman who travels outside of karma while carrying a single pearl. The woman's entire existence is nothing more or less than a single, unconditional yes to the world, 
a yes that heals and forgives without a second thought, a yes that cancels every debt and covers every shameful thing. Grace finds and creates beauty wherever she goes. Once was hurt, what once was friction, what left a mark no longer stings, because grace makes beauty out of ugly things. Grace finds goodness in everything. In the end, there is only grace, amazing grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Because grace makes beauty out of ugly things. Grace finds beauty in everything. Grace finds goodness in everything.
drawn together in the compassion and grace of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you make the last first and the first last. Where this gospel challenges the church, equip it for its works of service. Bless, bless our bishops, Anne and Elizabeth. Strengthen all who suffer for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great cities, nothing in creation is outside of your concern, mighty God. In your mercy, tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, where we find enemy, envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict and violence. Inspire leaders with creativity and wisdom. Bless the work of negotiators, peacekeepers, and development workers. Walk with judges and lawyers, victims of crime, and those serving sentences. Give fruitful labor and a livelihood to those seeking work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, even beyond our expectations, you choose to give generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all who grieve, to all who are ill, to all who are in any way in need. Especially, Lord, those battling the wildfires and the victims of those fires, those tending the ill, those seeking cures, and all who suffer illness of any kind, especially the coronavirus, those monitoring hurricanes and those whose lives are impacted by them, and all those we name now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need we entrust to your mercy through Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please take time to share the peace with those around you. And again this morning I say if you are alone, give yourself a hug. Feel your brothers and sisters in Christ reaching out to hold you. And trust that God is with you, offering you offering you the peace and the joy of Christ Jesus, our Lord. We worship with our offering. You are invited to try online giving using our website, lindalelutheranchurch.com, or our Facebook page. Mailing your gift is also always a good option. Your generosity is ever more important as we continue to provide digital worship and to reach out to our neighbors in need. Thank you so much. We pray our offering prayer. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending hymn.
the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Go in peace, share God's amazing grace. Thanks be to God.